Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Tim Brown, a sports editor at the Oregonian and Oregon Live in Portland, and we're filming another episode of Soups and Hoops. Today, we're gonna to be talking to Michael Russell, food critic and my colleague at the Oregonian Oregon Live. We're gonna be visiting the restaurant Ha VL up here on 82nd Avenue in Portland that serves some incredible, meticulously crafted Vietnamese soups. And here is Michael. Tim F.S. Brown. What my is up, man. my guy? Good to see you. How are you doing? What a great idea. Soups and hoops. I'm ready to All eat right. some soup and talk some hoops. After you, sir. <laughs> Thanks, brother. What's up? <laughs> How are you? Yeah. yeah. Good to see you, man. How are you doing, yeah. Peter? I'm good. Thanks, th th thanks yeah. for having us in here, man. Yeah, We're excited you. to eat some soup and talk some hoops. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite. Chicken noodle. He's got I'll take that one, noodle, Peter. Thanks, bud. One, yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, that looks great. This is snail noodle. Perfect. So uh, <laughs> I'm having the snail noodle soup here, which is a sea snail noodle soup. Uh -huh. uh, it has tofu. It has this sea snail kind of meatloaf, sliced pork tomatoes, garlic, it looks like fried onions, and an assortment of herbs, especially cilantro, stuff like that. It's something that's just a staple of most Vietnamese soups. I'm eating the chicken noodle soup. It's sort of like chicken noodle soup on steroids, I guess, with these beautiful fat rice noodles. It's got shredded chicken and shredded egg. Mm -hmm. And it also has this shredded uh, lo meatloaf. It's kind of like pork, I think. I wanted to switch to talking about basketball a little bit. You're a basketball fan, a casual one. I worked around yeah. the sports department basketball is pretty much my life. How many Blazer games do you go to a year? Uh, just two or three. Yeah. Two or three? Two or three. Yeah. Do you have, so you've written articles in the past about like where to eat around the Moda Center. Sure, yeah. What are some of your favorite restaurants that are like, if you were to go pre-game or if you were to go post-game to like chow down, where, where are some of your favorites? All right, so two of Portland's best restaurants are walking distance. Um, Ox and Toro Bravo. Toro Bravo is a Spanish tapas restaurant. Mm -hmm. They get crazy busy, you know, almost every night. So you kind of want to be there right before they open to get a table. They open at five, so okay. that can be perfect because you you, know, you get there at four fifty-five, you put your name in, you eat, and then at six forty-five you're done with dinner. You can walk right. down, um, what is it? Not Russell Russell Street, Rodney. Walk down mm -hmm. Rodney, and you're basically right at the stadium. Ox is right around the corner. That's an Argentinian steakhouse, another great restaurant. They take reservations, so that's helpful. Do you have a favorite place pregame? You know, honestly, if I were to go somewhere, it's not super close to the Moda Center but I would probably go to Canard's Happy Hour. You show up there right at four, you can have some of those steam burgers, which are fantastic. Yep. They're like American cheese yep. topped on a beef patty that is yep. mixed in with a French onion reduction. It's so fantastic. It's That's so great good. Call. You can And you can house like, you know, three or, three four, or four of those, of those. Yeah, we did that once. <laughs> before you go, yeah, before you end up going uh, to, to go watch a game. So it's like, that's would, a great I call. Say that. I did that and then I went to Hey Love, which is this sort of like new tropical cocktail bar. And there were like 17 people in there pre-gaming for the uh, Blazer game. And they were gonna Uber, but you can walk. I mean, it's probably yeah. like, I think it's less than a mile. I remember you did some stuff about inside the, the Moda Center. Were there any ones that like impressed you specifically or that you would actually get like if you were going to eat stadium food? Yeah, I mean, that was a couple years ago, but I remember thinking it was cool that they got bunk at the time. And I don't know if they're still there, so don't quote me on this, but uh, they brought in Daddy D's Barbecue, which is a- They are still there. They're great. Okay, yeah. so Daddy D's is super cool there. A barbecue place, uh, a black owned barbecue place in Vancouver, Washington that's inside a gas station. Oh, cool. So you actually walk into the uh, the convenience store part of the gas station mm -hmm. and order your food and then it's all smoked in the back. And it's this family run place. There's really nice people, they're from Louisiana. It's cool that the Moda Center uh, and the Blazers brought in them because, you know, there was a barbecue place there before that was okay, but I think, I don't know, I think it's, it's hard to maintain quality when you go into a, a sort of operation like the Moda Center where you're gonna be feeding thousands and thousands of people within a you know, two hour window and then there's just nothing the rest of the time. Like right, how do you maintain right. quality? And you know, in terms of your smoking schedule, how do you time that up to be Yeah. It's really tricky, but I admire the people who do it well. Now food, wine, culture in general has become like a big deal in the NBA. 
yeah. CJ McCollum is a huge wine fan. Like there are some Blazers who just love to get involved in that whole thing. And what I think is cool is that you're now starting to see LeBron some, James. LeBron James is a big, yeah, yeah big wine fan too. Likes but, Oregon Pinots. Right. You were talking about um, the fact that you're starting to see like NBA players out on the town. Right. You had mentioned Pau Gasol has been kind of seen doing his thing. Yeah, I mean, town. I spotted that on Instagram more than anything, but he went to Le Pigeon, which is one of Portland's best restaurants. Yeah. And someone also mentioned to me, I don't know if it was on Instagram or what, but he went to Canfont, which is the Spanish restaurant in, uh, it's in the Pearl District. And I know that that restaurant is a favorite of Terry Stotts. Uh, oh, really? So I, 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 obviously I don't know, but I would imagine that he recommended it to him. Yeah. Very traditional Spanish restaurant. It's actually the second location of a restaurant that exists in Spain outside of Barcelona that's sort of popular for anniversaries and events and weddings and stuff like that. Then both you and I, we went out to the Hattie B's pop-up mm -hmm. not long ago mm -hmm. and saw Scal La Bissière there. Uh, in line, just like we were, yep. to get some of the uh, the Nashville hot chicken that That's they right. brought to Portland not That's long right. ago. That was pretty cool to see them like standing in line, just like the regular folks. NBA stars are just like you and me. So that line, I remember, stretched yeah. around the block at Hawthorne and 12, and Scal was just standing right at the corner. And I, you know, I don't think many people were bothering him, but I went around and I was shooting video of the line, and like a couple minutes later, I looked back and he had gone, and I was like, oh, I hope I didn't like scare him off because I actually didn't even recognize him like you told me later on like oh that's Scal standing right there you know but it's cool that he's out there because I, I think that t you know 10 years ago like like the Brandon Roy era of the Blazers basketball I remember like the Blazers were quizzed on what their favorite restaurant was and almost like half of them said Morton's Steakhouse and I was like right. that's so depressing like Morton's is this chain steakhouse it's owned by Landry's which is also uh it's the restaurant group of Tillman Fertitta, who's the okay. uh, 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 owner of the Houston Rockets. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, it's just a, it's a place that's kind of it's kind of a cookie cutter steakhouse. If you like the steakhouse vibe, they give you what you want. It's like yeah. it looks really nice inside, and I, I think NBA players just like every city they rolled into, they would just go to the steakhouse, go to the steakhouse. Like, yeah, because that's what they know. Out a you know what bit, I mean? You know? Yeah, exactly. Like what all of us, with. Yeah. we're all becoming foodies. Someone with the Blazers once told me, uh, I'm not gonna out him, but that they, they had taken my restaurant guide and turned it into a little like folder, like a three ring folder. And so really? it, was like, it was available to players if they wanted it. I thought that was super cool. All right, I think we'll wrap it up there. All right, Soups and Hoops, baby. Soups and Hoops. Yeah, episode um, one in the books. Absolutely. Thanks, Tim. Hey, it was fun. Where can we find your work? I mean, oh, I'll right. Uh, <laughs> I'm on Twitter and Instagram, TDM Russell. And I'm on uh, OregonLive.com. You can find me uh, in the org page of the Oregonian, on, usually on Fridays. Okay. And you can find me here at Javiel, usually early in the morning. Awesome, man. <laughs> well, check you later. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Yep. And then we cut. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, Do I have something on my shirt?